Welcome, in front of me is a OnePlus Nord CE4 Lite and today I'll show you a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this device. So, starting off, let's open up our settings. And from here we can begin with the wallpaper and style. Now this is a generally location where you can customize a bunch of different look and feel of your device, which includes things like your fonts, icons, always on displays, colors, uh, which refer to these kind of colors right here, uh, fingerprint animation, edge lighting, which not sure how there is edge lighting considering this is a flat display. Um, I guess it's just kind of going to light it up. So yeah, you can customize it all in here. Now going back, we also have the home screen and lock screen. And here we can select our home screen mode. This uh, has two options, drawer mode and the classic mode, which would be or standard as it's called here, which would be all the applications smack in the middle of your home screen or drawer. Obviously just has a drawer uh, where all the applications are stored. We also have the home screen layout in here. And we also have the pull uh, icon pull down gesture, which uh, this is what you could consider a one-handed mode. I personally don't really like this too much as... Let's see if it is going to work. Okay, so as you've seen once, it pulled up the uh, the app tray. So it doesn't always work. Uh, I think it's just more of an angle. Nope. So yeah, uh, I personally can be effed with this because it doesn't really work all that well. Uh, maybe if you're using classic mode uh, or standard as it's called, it's going to work better. Uh, but for what I usually do and how I like my phone, this is absolutely uh, kind of redundant. But still, some people will want to have this enabled, so I did want to point it out. I will though disable it for myself. Now in here we should also have, there we go, swipe down on the home screen. Uh, this defines what happens. Uh, it's selected to be shelf, which is the OnePlus is kind of like a, just a screen. There we go, or actually didn't even enable, but it's kind of like a area where we have a bunch of uh, shortcuts applications, I think, and stuff like that. Uh, I don't personally care for that, but what I do care is the notification drawer that is below as an option. So now whenever you swipe down, you actually get your notifications along with the toggles. Uh, and therefore, you don't need to swipe from the very top to bring up your uh, tray. Pretty neat. Now let's go back to the main settings page and now we can navigate to the display and brightness and here we have things like the dark and a light mode uh, which i believe shows up throughout the setup process but under that we have the schedule mode so this will allow you to switch between light and dark mode based on the schedule on the either sunset to sunrise or on a custom timer giving you the nice versatility of not getting flashbanged by your own device during the night time additionally we have things like refresh rates in here uh, and colors so start off with the refresh rate so here we have the auto select standard and high for some reason it's selected on standard um i personally like it to be on an auto select this basically alters between the 120 hertz and 60 although it could even go maybe lower i think this is an ltpo display so if it is it should be able to go below 60 frames uh, in any case uh, this will give you the best refresh rate in terms of like motion smoothness and also best battery life with that refresh rate. Uh, it's, i kind of go over it, uh, auto select basically combines the battery life of standard and the high refresh rate of high, giving you high refresh rate when it's needed, when there's content moving on a screen, like for instance right now, uh, but when there isn't one like right here, it will automatically drop the refresh rate to preserve the battery life. Now, when it comes down to the refresh rate, I would not recommend using the high under no circumstance as it usually uh, just will deplete your battery faster while offering almost no discernible difference. Uh, the reason I'm saying usually is because you might encounter random occasions on some devices, which I did encounter not too long ago, though it wasn't OnePlus. Uh, the stand or not the stand, but the auto select was running permanently at 60. And obviously it should have been running at 120 uh, when I was scrolling up and down and it wasn't. And at that point I was forced to select it to be on high as the auto select didn't really do what it was supposed to do. Now here we should also have our screen uh, saturation on oh, the real screen color mode as it's called and we have vivid or natural. Uh, I'm an advocate of natural colors right here. So that's what I'm going to select and it just tries to tone down the colors and you can kind of see a big difference in the red specifically. So 
you can see it does differ quite significantly. Not much difference in terms of like purples, blues, uh, and greens, but the red ones are just night and day difference. And these are ones that are usually on almost every device oversaturated for some reason. Now, it makes the devi device look more poppy in terms of content that is being displayed on it. And this is something that manufacturers obviously want to abuse when you're looking at phones in a store in a lineup, you're probably gonna be drawn to the one that has the most vibrant colors. But on a day-to-day -day use, the absurd amount of saturation uh, is just overdone to the level that I wouldn't really want to use it uh, myself like, like it is set. So I therefore like to use the natural color. Now, moving back to the main settings page under the notifications and status bar, we have a neat ways of clearing up our status bar of unwanted clutter. So status bar right here will allow you to toggle off a bunch of different uh, things that might be on. Things like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi that you most likely might be running permanently on, uh, but you don't care to see it permanently on your status bar as you are absolutely aware that it is there. So it looks like I can disable Wi-Fi, I mean uh, Bluetooth, but doesn't seem like I can get rid of Wi-Fi as there is no option for it here. Now we also have the ability to compound the notification icons. By default, it will show you three different icons from three different applications. Now you can compound it to a number or just hide it all together if you want to have like an absolutely clean aesthetic to your device. And in terms of battery style, we have the option to, uh, for instance, change it, uh, the actual style along with uh, showing the battery presented, I think, there we go, with the horizontal battery, you have the option to show the percentage inside of the battery. Again, compounding it, but still keeping the versatility of actually knowing the exact percentage of your battery. And last thing that I wanted to show is the gesture navigation, which I assume will be in on, uh, under the additional settings and system navigation, there we go. And here we have the button and the gesture navigation, so you can choose whichever one you want. I personally like the gesture navigation, so you can switch it in here. And we do have some other options for the sensitivity of these gestures. Uh, we have mistouch prevention and swipe to uh, prevent, oh, switch to prevent apps. And unfortunately, we're missing. Yep, we're missing the option that I was hoping to find here, which would be to hide the bar, which. Some devices do have, but it looks like OnePlus does not. Oh wait, no, never mind. There it is. I'm just blind. Okay, so there we go. Um, now, with that being said, this concludes all the tweaks and tricks that I want to show you. So if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.